Okay, so this is going to be a very simple introduction to Odoo and creating an app. We're going to start with just diving into what is actually Odoo about, what's it made of. I think that's very important to understanding how to actually build an app on the, the Odoo framework. Let's begin. So what is Odoo actually made of? So Odoo is a collection of open source technologies. So together they they work, they interplay to allow you to create a, what they used to call enterprise resource planning tools and you can create apps on top of this framework which intertwine with each other. The programming language that Odoo was written in is Python but in order for the system to actually become useful of course uh, there's a data layer which is Postgres, that's the database behind the system and the actual interface to the program is through a web browser so your HTML, JavaScript, i.e. web technologies and in order for you to talk to the back end of the Postgres uh, Python the web server gateway interface uh, fr framework is Worksoic, uh, which is a Python web server gateway framework um, which takes requests from the web browser and passes them to Python which then goes through the object relational model and results in your query. The query is then received by the Python program and it, the, the Odoo does its work, tries to work out what you're asking, are you adding more data, are you requesting a view and the work happens, a bit of number crunching and eventually, if all goes well, what you get back in your browser is something that obviously makes sense and something that you want to want to uh, achieve. Maybe that be adding a new task to a to-do application or adding a new customer. This is all done through the web browser. You can also do this via remote procedure calls via the JSON API, but that's more of the more advanced stuff that we won't be going into in this video. But right off the bat, obviously, it's quite easy to see there's quite a lot of technologies involved in a system like Odoo, which can be quite daunting. But uh, it's uh, perhaps my my place to say straight away, I'm no expert in in this field at all. Um, my background is in ethical hacking. I like to jump into technologies, find out how they work, and ultimately hack away, find out how it's working see if we can create our own technologies on top of it and hopefully have some fun, fun along the way. So the structure of an Odoo module, um, module has one, two, three, four, four main files to start with and each of these files make up your app. You've got the openerp.py which dates back to what Odoo used to be called. Uh, when Odoo was first released I think it was called a it was called T Tiny ERP, Tiny ERP standing for Tiny Enterprise Resource Planning Application. It then changed its names to Open ERP, and now it is called Odoo or Odo, depending on how you want to pronounce it. The OpenERP.py file describes quite rudimentarily what what your app is about, its version, and all the things you need to know about the app when you're installing it, such as your who creates the app. For example, let's dive in and have a look at an example. So. Opening this up now. So here we can see, if we go to look at the openerp.py file, we can see we've got a uh, dictionary here which says the name, description, author, and the dependencies of an app. Now, in true object orientated form and Python in general actually you can extend modules which is encouraged to do rather than roll your own app which exists in a silo you can create an app which extends the features of an existing app so for example maybe you've you've played with an application and you wanted to do a little bit more what you can do here is you can ex extend an application by saying your app depends on another app and add functionality rather than trying to reinvent the wheel the uh, old saying of don't repeat yourself in programming 
this uh, data section here specifies the the external files um, on which your module depends. So, for example, the file here, the to do view.xml, defines all the views and menu items which will appear in Odoo once you install the app. Your security, ion model access. Ion model .access is actually the name of the table stored in Postgres where you can define the security rules for your app, who can make changes, who can add items to it, etc. etc. Okay. Okay, so quickly before we dive in and start writing our own OpenERP descriptor for our app, I'd quickly like to dive into the database just to demystify some of what's going on here because when I first got started in the Audio development, so I was a little bit mystified by all of these different files, how they relate to each other, how does it connect to the database, and it's very easy to get lost as to where is your data. And there's that, there's that, that saying, I'm probably misquoting it, um, whereby back in back in the day, um, developers would explain their programs using flowcharts, and the saying goes something along the lines of show me your flowcharts and I will continue to be mystified but show me the data and I'll begin to understand so in lieu of that let's have a look at the table itself so here we go irmodelaccess.csv we'll have a look at that file first and then we'll open up Postgres and actually go to that table we'll find that there's a table in the database called IR model access and if we look at the CSV file now IR model access we can see we have the CSV headed with these headers over here and the name of the app users and some flags here so we've got some clues about what this mod file might be doing so if we peer into the database Postgres we might have a bit more of a clue as to why this why this CSV is set up and why it's ordered in the way that it is. Okay, so let's just list all of the tables. Now, a quick way to list all tables in Postgres is to go slash dt, and we see a nice long list of all the tables in Odoo. Oh, and we just scrolled by one there, starting with ER. So there's 420 tables in the full installation of Odoo. I may have activated some modu modules, so there may be less than that by default. Hey, let's have a look at the table IR, IR model access.csv. Okay, so to do that, we can just view the table definition of it. So if we go dt slash dt plus, so the actual tables are not separated by dots in Postgres, they're separated by underscores. So we go to dt slash dt plus ir model access, and we can see we have a table named ir model access, the user Chris and size. So the table um, ir model access has many a many a field, so we've got the ID, uh, model, primary key, who made the module, the write date, create date, and group ID. So let's do a select on that table to find out what kind of data is inside. Here we go. This table a bit bigger. Cool. So we've got the write ID, parent read, name, group ID. And very shortly after this video, I'll upload the next video, which will go into how we can start creating a, a goals application, which will just be a, a temporary t example app um, where you can set goals for your organization, share them with your followers, and set milestones, things like that. Um, I think that's enough for one video for now. Um, I'll go and fix the awful, awful audio on this video and hopefully increase the resolution as well so the code can be seen a lot more cleanly uh, online too. Thanks very much for your time. Bye.